together, you just get to pick what fish you want to go and catch. Uh, basically for me, I'll let all the elements decide that. So it comes down to wind, tide, the moon, all of it. Um, after that session I had with Jess a couple of weeks ago where we just got absolutely destroyed by sharks and the nannies, I'm like fiending to get back out there. So I had a look at the conditions. We've got building to a full moon. 10 to 15, you know what, we're in a 25 foot boat, 10 to 15 is like zero to five these days. So I made him a mission, woke up this morning all by myself and uh, charged out there. It was, it was, it was, it was pretty blowy. Um, got out to where I wanted to be, dropped down and oh my, it was probably to date the wildest nanny session I've ever had. Um, I'm gonna let you guys watch it, but it's just one of those days where things just don't go wrong and everything just seems to go right and every fish wants to eat. That was today. Um, it was absolutely amazing. And to do it all by myself, it was actually really special just to, actually, to put the rods down. Uh, basically put the rods down at about two o'clock and just picked up the camera and just started filming some cool things, which to me, is the ultimate like if you can get to a point where you're filming or catching fish for a living and you get to put down the rod and film that's as good as it gets so so yeah, we're going to wind back to this morning where it all started and i'll catch you back here First drop. <laughs> oh, that's what we want to see. Oh, I have a feeling it is a very big valley. By the way, those head and tail beats are going. There she is. Big old valley. Not the best start, but can fight. Oh my, that's... Is this thing gonna wake up? <laughs> oh no, I think it's another one. Oh, that's good. Stop eating it. Stop it! No! He's got he's eating it. Let it go to the bottom. This is like real world issues here. You can't get your jig to the bottom. Alright, bottom. Oh you're kidding! This feels better guys. This feels much better. That big burning run, there it is again. 
this feels much better oh yeah this is it this is the one this is the one we wanted intel by the way is coming up still running just had to get it past those valleys Did I just see a tint of red? Did I just see a tint of red? Woo! That is what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Happy. Just had to get it past those valleys. That is a perfect, perfect specimen. God, they look good. doing at the moment I've actually got the boat one forward one reverse so I'm spinning the boat on a dime here and because I'm running a vibe uh, obviously I'm the vibes drifting a bit quicker so I'm just kind of gonna face into the breeze here and nearly like go after the vibe I'm gonna keep it direct on the bottom and try and keep me over the top of it it's hard to do by yourself but we're gonna give it a run Oh, that was him. At least bite it when I'm like watching or doing something. That is a fish. We're gonna give it a bit. We could be on the nanny train here. So I want to try and show you guys something and I really hope you can see it in this fine detail but um, let's I'll explain it so 63 meters of water three times zoom and you can barely barely see that little speck there right so I'm just gonna go into idle because this is where I'm gonna start drifting it looks like absolutely nothing that tiny little speck and you can see my gain like say if I've set it to auto that's auto, that's there, that's on auto, and the spec's even tiny again, like I'm talking, you know, like a pinprick. What I've been doing is when I've been sounding over marks, I've been raising my gain. So here I go, like I'm plus four, plus five, and that's maybe a bit too grainy, we're gonna drop it down to plus four, but now you can see there's one, two, three, four, five separate fish on the sounder. So, or like, trust me, when it comes to auto, I am auto life. Like camera, GoPro, you name it, it's all auto. But um, 
eight times out of ten I'll run, I'll run the sounder in auto but if I go over an area that I know should be showing fish or I just feel like the sounders maybe a bit too clear for my liking I'll just raise the gain a bit and as I raise the gain I'll raise the color it's basically like if anyone's ever played with photos before you're just sharpening up the photo you're giving it a bit more contrast and a bit more color um, and out of that you start seeing stuff so this is that's been a huge part you know like that's literally where I've been fishing you saw those tiny specks I can barely get my jig to the bottom so it just shows that being out here and playing around with your sound and understanding a few little crucial parts makes a huge difference to finding these fish. That's a nanny. That is a nanny. Well, I'm probably going to get a second drift out of this one. He's coming straight up. Oh, what is going on here? Look at that thing. Oh, we're gonna go again here. Straight up, I'm gonna pop this. I'm gonna send it. It's always a pretty solid cast too on the vibe. This guy's going in the bleeding section. <laughs> oh, we're well and truly still in the zone here. <laughs> Mental. Sometimes when you find them, it's less is more. Like there's just nothing on the sounder like what I showed you before. It's just that tiny, tiny little speck. Um, what I'm doing while this vibe's sinking, making sure, because I know the line's tight from that fish, so I'm flicking it out, and as I flick it out, I kind of cast the line back over itself and it forms a coil, and I can see the coil moving knowing that my vibe's still sinking. Like sometimes it's quite hard to tell if they're on the bottom or not. <laughs> oh, hold him. I don't think it's going to take long. We're back down. Come on, get down there. Oh my gosh. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Oh, he's going. That's a good one. Oh, get up. Get up. Woo. Really 
frustrating. He's actually, that's a huge nanny. Just gonna show you because I actually don't, I don't really wanna bring him in the boat yet. Um, That's a giant nanny. He's just, he's been hit by a shark and it's thankfully only just taken his, his belly section from him, but that's a giant fish. Wow. This is unbelievable. It's so good when you can come across nannies and fingers crossed, like we just had that one little issue with sharks. Last couple of trips has just been undoable, like leave straight away. I do have another couple of marks, like a good few hundred meters from here. Worst case scenario, if this, if another one gets sharp, we'll um, we'll try and burn away. And you can still see I'm flicking out the line, putting it back on itself. There you go. It's hit the bottom now. You can just tell because the curl kind of like a pigtail and the pigtail just works its way down. And then all I'm doing is just slow lifts. And I know that it's drifting that way so I'm just getting a couple hops out of it. Oh, that was a fish. It's going to slow lift, control drop. Slow lift and then all the way to the bottom. Little hop. There he is. Woo! There he is. I've done... <laughs> I've done a fair bit of diving and I completely understand that when you're on the bottom and you're scratching around on the bottom oh my when you're scratching around on the bottom that's when a lot of the fish actually come in so my idea between jigging and vibing making sure that you're on the bottom and that you actually do hit the bottom because that's the noise whoa that's the noise that they want brings them in gets in amongst the fern and everything else that's in there We're just on fire today. <laughs> there it is. Nomad Max Vibe. 62 meters or around, what is that, 6128? Around 200 foot of water. We're just dominating here. This is absolutely wild. All right, we are on the bottom again. Oh my. This is mental. I'm, I've got a fish. 
I actually want him to let it go so I can just have a chance of vibing. It's hit the bottom. Just let me like, let it go. It looks like I've got, <laughs> it looks like I'm getting nibbles because he's not letting the vibe go. Like the vibes are soft. So when they chew it, it actually feels normal to them. I've got him, like I'm, I'm going to have to just bring him up. The, using trebs, they're so sharp. It's actually gone down inside his stomach. There's, there's no way I'm getting that out. Like, I'm going to have to operate to get that out. That's a, that's a tomorrow job, I reckon. Oh, I hope you can actually hear me because it is pretty windy today. This is one out of the packet. So it's a 130 Nomad Max vibe. This is what I've been using. And I think the results kind of speak for themselves sometimes, you know, like when you're dropping down a vibe, you basically hit the bottom, go to lift, the fish is eating it. And then he's eating it to the point where it's like, inside his gut uh yeah what i'm gonna do i'm gonna film the next one i'm gonna do oh we'll go up for another drift i'll show you the cast i'll show you the rundown every single thing that i do how kind of how to do it especially with a fish biting you know this is going to give you guys a really good indicator and example of uh if you if you want to start doing it um and giving it a shot like this is kind of how we're going to run it. Oh, the tuna school's wild. All right, reset, go back up, show you how it's done. Okay, we're starting off. So what I do is always, always get the boat in the exact same position. So I'm going through and I'm turning hard left. And I've actually got a new heading sensor at the moment, Precision 9. And I've done a few bits and pieces, which I really want to explain it all to you, this Arvo, when I'm out the wind. But, um, We've kind of put ourselves in position. What we're going to do, I've got a current coming directly towards me and wind pushing me against it. So I'm going to do a fairly big cast. I'm going to call that 50 meters. And what I'm hoping is a sink rate of the vibe by the time it sinks and the winds pushed me and pulled when the currents pulled the vibe that the vibes directly underneath me that's the ultimate result it's actually okay like you can do a 70 meter cast and still be extremely effective because you'll get a couple of hops out of it by the time it actually you become proper vertical you know so um sometimes don't be scared to put put in like a proper cast for the vibe because remember while it's sinking you're pushing onto it and the current's pulling onto you if you've got wind with tide and um, you're drifting the same kind of speed and direction as the tide, you can drop them straight down, but that's, that just doesn't happen. Like, that's just not a thing. That's too good to be true. And then same thing, I'm just, because I know I've just hooked a fish and landed a fish. A bit wild out here. Because uh, I've landed a fish, the line's tight, so I'm just flicking it off, making sure I'm not putting any resistance on the vibe. them. He 
carries on. Please let it go. Oh, no. Alright, we're bending. I tried. We got one hop out of it. Oh, there you go. Pulled hooks. All right, we're going to go again. So, drop it down. Oh, you... Man. There you go. Just let it... I can't actually... Every time I... They're just eating it. They refuse to not eat it. They're vibing. We're on. Okay. Slow lift. He's eating it. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you the sounder because you'll think that, you know, oh, dropped it. Okay, that's no biggie because we've got another one. What is happening? Perfect little specimen. This guy's actually really healthy still. So. It's so incredibly anti-Queensland of me, but. Straight down. Straight down. Okay. This is what we're gonna do. Because I'd actually love to show you guys how these vibes work. And I've caught a couple. Don't need any more. So here we go, this is going to be pretty interesting. Um, the scary part is it's only 10 to 9 and I'm done, I'm completely done. So I've taken the hooks off my vibe and um, the wind is picking up a little bit too much and it's get, going to get pretty annoying. So I've taken the hooks off the vibe. I hope you can still hear me, like the wind's really starting to push it. and. I'm going to show you guys the technique. At least this way I can show you the technique without them eating it and me hooking them. Because we've got the sun behind, I'm going to keep, keep the boat kind of arsed towards the sun so hopefully you can see that there's not too much glare. Okay, I'd say we're on the bottom here. There's a bite, look at that, he's got it. Now we're gonna go lift, and then you stay in control, and he's eating it. That's a fish on the bite. He's still got it. He's still got it, and he let it go. Okay, we're gonna go lift, and then as you stay in control, you can watch the rod tip, and you'll, and you'll feel it through the rod. There he goes, eating it. I'm gonna go lift, lift, if you really wanna stir him up, eating it. There he is. Make sure you drop it to the bottom though, because that's where we're always going to get the bite. Slow hop. Slow hop. There he is, got it. And again. Like that's a fish on. <laughs> He's still got it. I wonder how much pressure I can put on it. 
He would just be swimming down. He's still on. Oh, he's going to start taking off. What are the chances of him actually swallowing it and it going into his gut and me landing it? That would be phenomenal. Look at that. I've got him. <laughs> what? You're kidding, aren't you? And he's pulled. Oh, they pulled. How was he pulling drag? Oh, his mate's eating it. And again, there it is. You can just, you, as I can, as I lift, and they feel that vibe, and I put it slack. It's like they follow, follow, follow it. There you go. And again. Sure, his mate. Oh, there. Sure, his mate wasn't far behind. Not at all. All right, buddy. That's it. Let it go. Thank you. We're gonna get. We're out of here. This is crazy stuff. Not many times in my life have I put a vibe down with no hooks, but that was cool. Okay, so next destination, we are heading to the islands. That's actually where I'm gonna be staying tonight. Um, very important, knowing that I've got a run across you know, the shipping channel, the main passage, uh, basically the same contour line I'll be running along and then cutting through into the wind is where I've caught these nannies. So, so eyes peeled. I really, really hope I find something, you know, like tiny to show you um, what they look for. But knowing that I've kind of got an hour's run ahead of me, I'll just be staring at the sound and hoping for the tiniest, tiniest little so, once again, three times zoom, and just keeping an eye out. So I've been watching the sounder like I said I was going to, and once again, hopefully you can see this. So, 66 meters of water, three times zoom, and like I'll try and give you a comparison. Like, oh, it's so hard, but that tiny tiny little little whatever it is that blimp that's me traveling at 30 knots so what i've done i can't really touch the screen because it'll give me my you know give you guys the mark but you can see here how i've traveled obviously gone past touched the screen marked it and that's the beauty of the simrad there's my little x and there's a couple of fish. But it's that easy. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty close one. So I kind of like looked around because I was fully zoomed in. Looked down, went, oh, it's definitely fish there. And I've zoomed out because I went, I swear there's a green zone here. I'm about two, three hundred meters inside the green zone. So we're not fishing it, but I'll just uh, delete that mark so I don't have it in there. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going, but that's honestly all I do. Just travel, keep an eye on the sounder. Um, see you find them. All right, short and sweet little trip there. Um, it's amazing, like, it's so nice out here. It was a solid 15. Oh, oh, <laughs> long tails. I honestly didn't actually see them. Uh, there's an island here with like a bit of a bommy on it. We had an outgoing tide, the tide's coming around the corner, hitting this bommy. I was actually going to have a cast, which I will. I'll cast it at first. Um, then we're going to muck around with some tuna, do some inshore stuff, something completely different. While we're doing this, I'm going to look for a um, neat little spot for tonight that I'm going to call home. But yeah, we're going to have a bit of holy 
tuna bust up. I'll show you them in a bit when we go and catch one. Uh, but first, I want to cast at this bombie and see if we can get a big spanner or a GT or something. And we'll come back to these guys because they're just going sick. Uh, yeah, they're just doing their thing. Good on them, you know. Taste little critters. Oh, they're behind us too. They're everywhere. Why are you in the glare? Oh yeah, look at him. Oh, that's amazing. Coming straight oh, across me here, left. I'll just drop one here, eh? Look, here he is, here he is. Got him. Oh, my. Absolutely amazing. You guys say it to me every time and I literally walked out of the garage this morning and went, I'm gonna be going to the islands. Maybe I should take the fly rod because I reckon there'll be some tuna around. Like building tides after neap tides, water will be nice and clear. I was like, surely there'll be some good longies around. I'll take the fly rod and I went, oh, nah. Idiot. Idiot. Oh, that was pretty cool. Look, big guy. That's a good churny. Fat guts on him. Catch, mate. Some days are just better than others. Um, I'm gonna get up the top here and explain what's going on. So, if anyone's ever been to Harvey Bay or seen Harvey Bay, you'd know that they do tuna on the flats. And we've got this section of sand flats, like there's Whitehaven there. We've got this section of sand flats. And I thought, I wonder if the tuna are working it like they do in Harvey, you know? Like it's just such a cool thing to go on there. It's two meters of water. And just to go in and just sight cast tuna. And obviously there's always gonna be other fish. So many in that school. Let's see if I can get a chaser. Wow. I know if I stopped it, I'd be instantly on. Oh, that was a good one. Good eight. Stubborn, stubborn creature. You're big. Oh, no. Give me a little boost. This way. No.
That's a good one. That's a real big fella. <laughs> like a bullet. Um, it's one of those things that like not many people kind of even consider. You know, they'll be sitting there in the boat like I've been, just chilling, chilling. Next minute, everything just starts happening. Like proper starts happening. Water explodes, sound a lights up. And you're like, wow, didn't that just turn it on? That's why. That little thing about there. Moonrise. Moonrise was like uh, probably an hour ago when this place just proper exploded. So it's one thing like an, all, you, all the freshwater barra guys and all that consider it a lot something to very oh, look at that it's something to uh, really really consider as well when you're in the salt alright so I'm just out of the wind here a little bit earlier I did uh, prepare that perfect little nanny you would have seen me catch um, it's funny like everyone you know you look at those trophy fish those real big ones and it's amazing to catch them but when you actually get the small guys, that's when I'm like, oh, yes. Even though they're not the best photo, when you put that thing on a wrap, cannot beat it. So, uh, Jess actually came home pretty late last night having a few drinks with the girls and uh, caused a scene, woke me up. So I stole her butter because I couldn't find a spare one. So she would have had fun cooking brekkie this morning. Bit of payback there was due, but this is what we got going on here. We're gonna get this little guy. That's gonna go there. This is gonna go here. Well, just when you think the day's going perfect, somehow the water bottles leaked into my wrap little thing which isn't sealed and I've had a big blowout so instead of having like some actual decent wraps we're gonna have three little Harveys but slightly devastated but it's okay I've eaten worse that's for sure a bit of grain I wonder here. Looks like I can melt some cheese on there. Gotta go. Oh, 